In this video, we're going to present skew symmetric tensors and we will pay special attention to skew symmetric matrices in R3. A tensor W is called skew symmetric if W transpose is equal to negative W. This right away implies that the diagonal components have to be equal to zero. It also implies a very interesting result. Let's pick a general vector u. And then let's apply w to u and then take the dot product of u and w u. So w dot u from the properties of the transpose is equal to u dot w transpose u. But since w is skew symmetric, we can replace um, w transpose u with negative uh, w uh, u so we end up with uh, w dot u is equal to negative u dot w u the dot product is a linear operation and we can switch u and w u so we end up with w u dot u is equal to negative w u dot u w u dot u is a real number the only real number that's equal to its negative is the z is number zero this implies that w is perpendicular or orthogonal to u. Here's a picture that shows what the result uh, mean. Given a vector u, if I multiply or take uh, apply the matrix w on u, I end up with a vector w that is perpendicular to u. Any matrix M or tensor M can be decomposed into two additive components. If I have a, a matrix M, I can add M to its transpose and divide by two, I will get a symmetric tensor, or I can take M minus its transpose, I'm going to get a skew symmetric tensor. M will be equal to the sum of S and w. Here's a picture of what these do. If I have a, a u, which is a general vector in this space, mu is the vector resulting from applying m to u, we can decompose mu into two vectors, su and wu. su, as will be shown later, provides some information about the extension action of m while w provides some information about the rotation caused by m and as you can see w u is perpendicular to u it shows how the vector is rotated uh, s u provides uh, information about the extension w is equal to half minus the tra transpose of m while s is equal to half plus the transpose of m here are some numerical examples Starting with a symmetric matrix M, since M is originally symmetric, when I take M plus its transpose, I take half, S will be equal to M itself, while the skew symmetric component will be equal to zero. If, on the other hand, I start with M that is originally skew symmetric, when I calculate S, which is equal to half plus M transpose, half M plus M transpose, I will get zero, while W will be equal to M. If I start with a matrix M that's neither symmetric nor skew symmetric, I will get uh, a symmetric component and a skew symmetric component that when I add them, I will get the matrix M. We will now look at an important property of skew symmetric matrices, which is they have an eigenvector associated with an eigenvalue zero. We're going to uh, look at a skew symmetric tensor W that's act, that acts on the R3 space. And we're going to show that it has uh, an eigenvalue that's equal to zero. 
Now we know for sure because uh, this matrix is in R3 or acts on R3, we know for sure that it has to have at least one real eigenvalue. We're going to assume that this eigenvalue, our eigenvector, uh, P, which is of course not a zero vector, um, so let's assume that it's called P, this eigenvector, and this is the eigenvector of W, therefore, because it's an eigenvector, WP is equal to lambda P. We also know from the previous slide that WP has to be perpendicular to P. W, in fact, that applies to any vector. So P dot WP is equal to zero. But we also know that P is an eigenvector, so this is very special since WP, um, the, since P is the eigenvector, WP is equal to lambda P. So I can take this number out, lambda, and then I get B, P dot P. But P dot P is the norm of P or the square of the norm of P. And P is a non-zero vector, so this quantity is strictly positive. Therefore, lambda has to be equal to zero. Now, this of course also implies that W is a matrix that is not invertible, cannot be inverted. Another very important property of skew symmetric matrices is that they have an axial vector and their action on arbitrary vectors is similar to taking the cross product with that axial vector. For any general vector A, the action of W on A is akin or similar to taking the cross product of A with this axial vector omega P. And we're going to uh, set omega here first as wq dot r. And we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to present all this right now. So to present this, we're going to start uh, with a coordinate system made out of P, which is the eigenvector uh, of W, and two other perpendicular uh, vectors, q and r. So P, q and r form an orthonormal basis set. We already know uh, that P from the previous slide, that's the that special eigenvector of W, we know that WP is zero. So now we want to see what happens when I apply W to Q. So when I take W and apply it to Q, it will in general have three components, a component along P, a component along Q, and a component along R. So I'm going to take the dot product of WQ with the three uh, vectors to get these three components that I'm going to call alpha, beta, and gamma. And let's see what these three components uh, look like. The first component, which is, comes from WQ dot P, from the properties of the transpose, I can bring this here, become W transpose, and I can then, W transpose is equal to negative W, so this quantity will be equal to negative Q dot WP, but I know from the previous slide that WP is zero. So right away, I know alpha is zero. Beta, on the other hand, is equal to WQ dot Q. We know from the properties of skew symmetric matrices that every vector is perpendicular to uh, uh, the... Uh, the WQ. So WQ is going to be perpendicular to the vector itself Q, and so this is equal to zero. The remaining component is by definition omega, because we define WQ dot R as omega, so the third component is actually equal to omega. Which means that when I take a WQ, I will get this blue vector, which is a value omega in the direction of R. Similarly, if I repeat to try and find what WR is, I'll find that WR is equal to negative omega multiplied by Q. So we've established that WP is zero, WQ is equal to omega R, and WR is equal to negative omega Q. So now I know the action of W on the three uh, 
orthonormal basis factors, so now I can find the action of W on any general vector. So now let's see the action of W on an, on an arbitrary vector A. W A is equal to W A1 P plus A2 Q plus A3 R, where A1, A2, and A3 are the components of, of A. And we know already, we've already established these relationships that we can use. From this, we can find that W A is equal to this uh, form. A2, the component A2, multiplied by omega, which we defined, multiplied by the vector r, minus A3 omega, multiplied by the vector q. Now let's look at the other side. What happens if I take omega p cross a? Omega p cross a, uh, from the linearity of the operation, um, I will take omega out, and then uh, I will be left with A1 p cross p plus A2 p cross q plus a3 p q cross r from the properties of the uh, cross product and knowing that p q and r are orthonormal basis set um, we're going to find that o omega p cross a is equal to the same form as w a therefore this cross product is equal to w a uh, omega p is called the axial vector of w and w represents some form of rotation around p Let's look at a numerical, uh, let's look at the component form. W is a, is a, is a skew symmetric matrix, therefore the diagonal components have to be zero. And if I assign a W12, W13, W23 as uh, these three independent components of W, because it's skew symmetric, the other side will, be, uh, uh, will have the negative values of these three. And you can see that W is made out of three independent components, so it makes sense that there is a vector that represents W. This vector is called the axial vector, and the axial vector has this form, negative W23, uh, W13, and negative W12. Skew symmetric matrices are considered infinitesimal rotations. Here's an example. Consider this rotation matrix that is a function of a time t and a rotation speed omega. I'm going now to take the derivative of q with respect to t. Partial q by partial t, I'll take omega out. Cosine omega t becomes negative sine omega t. Negative sine omega t becomes negative cosine omega t and so on. So I get this matrix. If I look at this matrix when the t is very small, when the rotations are very small, sine 0 is 0 and cosine 0 is almost 1, so I will get this matrix which is a skew symmetric matrix. Now this is just an example that shows that given this form of q, its derivative with respect to time when, the, when time is small is a skew symmetric matrix. In the next uh, slide, we're going to show a more formal uh, uh, presentation of this. For very small rotations, the rate of change of rotation tensor is represented by skew symmetric matrix. Let's uh, pick a general uh, rotation tensor, Q. I know that Q multiplied by the transpose of Q is equal to the identity matrix. That's the uh, property, that's the um, by definition of a rotation uh, tensor. If I take the time derivative of the uh, left-hand side, I will get q dot q transpose plus q q transpose dot, and of course the time derivative of i, i is constant, is equal to the zero tensor. When q is very close to i, when it's an infinitesimal rotation. Therefore, we'll see that Q transpose is almost I, Q is almost I, we get that Q dot is equal to negative uh, Q transpose dot, which means that the time derivative of Q, or Q dot, when Q is very small, is a skew symmetric tensor. The last assertion we want to present is that 
any skew symmetric tensor is actually or can represent the speed of a rotation uh, of a rotation matrix uh, um, when the rotations are very small. So how to show this? We're going to just set Q as equal to I plus W multiplied by uh, uh, delta T. And we want to check is the Q, if I set Q like this, would it be a rotation matrix or, or not? Well, to find whether it's a rotation matrix or not, I'm going to take Q multiplied by its transpose. Q multiplied by its transpose, I plus W uh, multiplied by DT, multiplied by its transpose, this is its transpose. Um, we know that W transpose is equal to negative W. Uh, when I multiply these two, I will get this form, W DT cancels W DT, and W squared multiplied by DT squared when uh, DT is very small, uh, will be equal to almost the identity matrix, which again implies that the, shows the, 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 the close relationship between skew symmetric matrices and rotation matrices. In Mathematica, uh, here's the code to take to find the symmetric component of a, a general matrix S and the skew symmetric component of this matrix, uh, sorry, the, the symmetric component of, it, of the general um, matrix A and the skew symmetric component of the general matrix A.